Red Hive is definitely the most intense hive in Bee Swarm Simulator. It has perfect balance between having fun, making a lot of honey, and destroying all the mobs around the map. This is the optimal option for literally anything, and this video is the proof for it. I made a tiny plan over here, there are 6 steps, and I will talk about all of them. Let's start from step 1. Hive. So most amount of Red Hive people used something similar to this. This is the most popular version in 2024, and this hive is actually good, I don't argue here. But there isn't like 100% the best hive, everyone use it, no, this can't be possible. I truly recommend you to experiment, test different versions of your hive. Look, this is my hive, and there's only 2 carpenters, and this hive, it has 4 of them. And I used to have 4, but a month ago, I removed them and I put Brave Bee, and 1 extra Vector Bee. And now, I make more honey because of it, and I feel more comfortable during the boost. I'm not talking like I made the better version of this hive. No, but for me, for my style of gameplay, this hive is better. So I really recommend you to experiment. The only way to make a bunch of honey is to know what you're doing. We have to feel what we can change for the better. But for now, let's talk about this hive. If you're not endgame player and you don't know how red hive works, then this bee, this is precise bee. And precise bees make over 70% of honey. And also with this bee, you can maintain three of the most important buffs. Red pollen buff, Krikos, chance and super quick chance. So yeah, I can certainly tell you that this bee is the most important here. And usually people use 11 to 13 of them. So if you want to make a lot of honey, then you need to master this bee. Now spicy bee. There is nothing to tell about, just use 10 of them. Also I think some people might be wondering, like, why do you need that much vectors if you're a red hive? Well, yeah. 2 out of 3 tokens aren't really that cool, but the Palmark Plus is really necessary during the boost. You will realize this after 1 minute of boosting, so you need 8 vectors. Also you need 1 Boyan B, not more, not less. Red Hive people have some lack of capacity, so Boyan B is important. Now let's talk about Baby Love token. You need 4 bees that can give you this, and this hive has 3 baby bees and 1 tadpole. If you don't have any poinsettias, then just use 4 babies. I will talk about this big player, but for now now, let's talk about Carpenter Bee. This bee is kinda similar to Vector Bee, it doesn't have Palm Mark Plus, but it has regular Palm Mark and also Honey Mark, which gives you extra convert rate. In my opinion, this bee is overrated, and you don't really need to have 4 of them, but again, that's just a theory. Now, Shy Bee. Um, this bee is good. Technically, you can use Rat Bee instead, but you can equip Poinsettia at the Shy Bee, so if you wanna take your hive seriously and you have some Poinsettias, then Shy Bee is definitely better than Rat Bee, just use one Shy Bee. Event Bees. There is nothing to talk about, but if I would rate how important they are, then Digital Bee is number 1, number 2 is Bear Bee, number 3 is probably Tabby Bee, then Crimson Bee, Festive Bee, and Photon Bee. Alright, Epic Bees, and let's start from Riley Bee. The biggest reason why you need this is give it bonus. Makes no sense to have more than one, but also I don't suggest you to boost without Riley Bee. Just put one Riley Bee, make it gifted and forget about it. Now Rage Bee and Brave Bee. If you don't have Starsa, do not boost without Starsa please, then these bees are totally useless for you. Let's talk real quick about how Starsa works. This is Starsa and it can make damage, it can collect pollen and it can convert pollen inside of your backpack into honey. And the bigger damage total you have, the more you can convert, which means you have less problems with capacity. And look at the Rage Bee as good bonus, plus one attack. And Brave Bee has the same thing, so you can count these bees as helpful as Crimson Bee. Now Hasty Bee, it's easy to understand, you need this for bigger speed. And Basic Bee you need for x 1.2 pollen, also if you don't have Fuzzy Alt, then you need a gifted Fuzzy Bee in your hive, maybe even two of them. If you for some reason cannot collect all the tokens while boosting, you can try to use Tavern Bee. Also some people think that fire bee is good, but it gives almost nothing. Flame doesn't make a bunch of honey, so please don't use fire bee. Also a couple of words about red bee, yeah this bee is better than fire bee, but you can always put one extra precise bee or vector bee and it'll be much better than red bee. Also some people think that music bee is important. This bee gives critical chance and the most important melody buff, but you can always use toy horn to get extra melody buff. I will talk about this bee later, such a nice bee by the way. But let's talk about the last bee that some people also use, Gummy Bee. And the reason why people use it is because of 5% honey per pollen. Yeah, this boost is cool, but if you use one extra precise bee, you get more than 5% honey per pollen. So I just talked about bees and let's move to step 2. 
Mutations A lot of people underrate mutations. Yeah, they are not really good, but they can give you extra power, so they're kinda important. And the first mutation is damage. So, as you can remember, the bigger damage, the bigger conversion. So, I recommend you to use this mutation for some strong beasts, like Precises, and for some beasts that doesn't have any good abilities, like Basic B, Riley, Rage, Brave, now Gather Mount. This is a green mutation, and this mutation isn't really great for Red House, but you can use it on some beasts that have big gather mount, like Vector B, Photon B, Digital B, Convert Rate. This mutation can actually help you, especially if you don't have Starsa. First of all, the bigger your convert rate, the better will be conversion links. And second of all, Gifted Spicy B has interesting ability, Flame Fuel. If you don't know what is it, just look at this. So yeah, why we have this buff? All of your flames, they convert a bit of capacity from your backpack. That's just 50k but also plus 10% of your highest total convert amount. So imagine you have 100 million convert total during the boost, and 10% of it, it will be 10 million. Which means a single flame will convert 10 million and 50k of your capacity. This is insane. So that's the biggest reason why you need convert amount mutations. Even if you have Starsa, you might still have some problems with the capacity. So I recommend to use this mutation for some beasts that have big convert amount, like Spicy B or even Tabby B. Do you even know how much freaking convert rate does Tabby B have? I suggest that you experiment with this flame view, cause actually this buff is interesting. Now let's talk about the last mutation, B ability rate. I know I skipped energy mutation, but there is nothing to tell about, you just don't need energy. But what about B ability rate? This mutation is the rarest to get, but if you somehow got this mutation, then cool, but I don't suggest you to keep it if it's lower than 3% B ability rate. If it's higher than 3%, then it's great for every B, except basic B, this B doesn't have any buffs. But yeah, so 3 B groups, and there's a bunch of good B groups, so there is no certain meta. There is a couple of really good B groups though, and you definitely need to use them if that's possible. And the first B group is Festive Wreath. There is nothing to tell about, the only B to which you can equip this B group is Festive B. This B group gives Festive Mark ability token, which is probably the best mark. So just use this B group. The second really really great B group is Pink Shades, but this B group is great only if you have high bonus super quick chance. Just imagine, a single B group can give you 1% super quick chance. That's actually a lot from a single B group. The third B group is Poinsettia, and you can equip three of them. But again, this B group is good only if you have red pollen hive bonus, and you can get up to 25% red pollen. I've never seen 25, but I've seen 15% red pollen. That's like red bees give it bonus, and that's a lot. So even if you have 3%, maybe 4%, then you should definitely use it. Now Toyhorn and Kazoo. These B groups give you melee token, and I've won Kazoo and two Toyhorns. So I got three B groups that can give me melee buff. Cool? Awesome! If you have two toy horns, definitely use all of them. Such a nice B group. Also, toy drum, if you have this, just use it. Extra haste token will not be too much. All of those B groups I just talked about, they gotta be in your hive. But there's dozens of B groups that can also help you a bit, but they aren't that cool. And I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but I wanna show you some of my B groups that I use. Look at these thumbtacks. In total, I get 3% red B attack. And this business tab gives me 7% critical power. So, yeah, there's all my B groups, and this is pretty much all what you need to know about B groups. Let's move to step. 4. Amulets Oh, I know, you hate wasting your time to get better amulets, everyone does, but we have to do this, and the first amulet is Star Amulet, Supreme Star Amulet. The best you can get is Critical Chance, Big Gather Pollen, Be a Builder Raid, Pollen and Red Pollen. But also you can have Instant Conversion instead of Big Gather Pollen, basically it doesn't make any big difference. Here's my Star Amulet and this is 4.5 out of 5, but 2% B Builder Rate is crazy. Now Stickback Amulet, and the best we can get is 300k capacity, 1.25x convert rate, plus 2 red B attack, 30% red pollen or 10% pollen, 10% B attack and plus 1 B attack. Yeah, there is a lot of attack, but this is important. Out of all those buffs, you will definitely get capacity and convert rate. It's 100% chance to get them. Here's my amulet and I almost got perfect stats. 
Also, do not think that 10% pollen is worse than 30% red pollen. That's kinda complicated to understand and explain, but 10% pollen will give you pretty much similar boost to 30% red pollen. Now, Supreme Cock Amulet. This is hard to get Supreme Amulet, especially with good stats, so at least try to get good Diamond Amulet. And the perfect stats for Diamond Cock Amulet are plus 11% B attack, trust me that's more than plus 1 red B attack, then red pollen, even B ability pollen, super good power and instant red conversion. This is hard to get 5 out of 5, I know. Here's my amulet, this is Supreme Cock Amulet and this is 3 out of 5, not actually bad. So, Supreme Share Amulet, you can get a bunch of different stats, but out of all these stats, you need Goo, that's guaranteed, so not a problem. Also, you need Goo Conversion and Pollen. That's not hard to get Amulet like this, but if you don't have this, then out of all these stats, the best thing is Convert Amount. Now, Supreme End Amulet, and there is nothing to talk about, I got perfect Amulet like 2 years ago. These are all the buffs that you need to have, Convert Rate, Critical Chance, Critical Power, Red Pollen, and White Pollen. Not really hard to get something like this. Also, you don't need exactly white pollen here, don't focus on this. King Biru Amulet, and all you need is just plus 1 B attack, doesn't matter which field you have, but sometimes you also play Robo Challenge, and because of this, I recommend you to have Mushroom Field Boost. And the last amulet is Moon Amulet, and the best stat you can get is plus 8% Honey Per Pollen. If you don't have a lot of Moon Charms, then try to get at least Instant Conversion. Now, let's talk about the resources that you need for boost. It'll be very short, so it'll be very fast. Usually people boost to the end of wind boost. This is 30 minutes, and if you have your gun jobs and coconuts in automatic mode, then you will spend 180 coconuts and 900 gun jobs. And if you constantly use your starsa and you always drop your jelly beans, then it'll be 120 stingers and 60 jelly beans. But you don't need to drop jelly beans that fast. So let's say you will spend 45 of them. Also, you usually need a about 2 loaded eyes, 2 glitters, 2 super smoothies, and 10 clouds. Yeah, this is pretty much it, that's a lot of resources, I know. Step 6, Nectars. Again, it'll be fast, there's currently 5 Nectars, and of course, you need 5 of them. But if you cannot maintain 5 different Nectars, then I rank them from the best to the worst. And number 1 Nectar that you always need to have is Invigorating Nectar. And you'd better save this Nectar inside of Nectar Pot. The next nectar is refreshing. This one is almost as good as invigorating, but a little bit worse. Try to always have 1.5x red pollen. Number 3 is satisfying nectar, and the biggest reason why you need to have this is because of x2 red b color rate. Number 4 is motivating nectar, and number 5 is comforting nectar. If you're about to switch your hive to red, I wish you luck, and goodbye to everyone.